Okay, let's take a look at a physical pendulum. And so in this case, we have a rod, but it can be anything that has, has a pivot point that's off its center of mass so that there will be a torque that makes it swing back and forth after you disturb it. And we define a distance h is the distance of the pivot point from the center of mass. Uh, I should say from the center of mass here. And if we do a free body diagram, uh, we have weight coming from the center of mass. There's a normal force where the pivot is, but we can sum the torques about that point, so it won't matter. And this angle theta would also be the angle between the rod or whatever the object's axis is and the weight. And some of the torques uh, would be mg sine theta, because you only want the perpendicular component times the lever arm, and we define the lever arm as the distance from the um, center to the rotation axis. So that would be lever arm L normally, but we're using the term H um, because it also has relevance with the parallel axis theorem. And so we can see this is the disturbing torque. It is not linear with uh, displacement theta with the angle that I bring it back, but we just learned that for a small theta, sine theta is essentially equal to theta in radians. And so I can simplify this as the torque is mgh times theta. You have to be careful here. mgh is not potential energy. Uh, it is um, the weight times the lever arm, and then we have sine theta, which we've replaced with theta, so we get the torque. And so now I can make a graph, kind of like we were doing with a uh, spring mass system, uh, where we did force versus x, or a simple pendulum, we did force um, versus the arc length x. Now we're doing torque, uh, newton meters versus theta in radians. And the slope of this line, as you can see over here, would be mgh, and it would be a straight line, at least for small angles out to... 20, 25, 30 degrees, depending on how much deviation you're willing to take. And so we can get the equation for the period of a physical pendulum. If we go to the generalized equation here, instead of period is 2 pi squared to m over k, m is the inertia, k is the slope of our displacement versus force, or in this case, torque graph. So you could really call this a torque constant here. Uh, but we're just going to keep calling it force constant, the slope of the graph. And so slope is the torque constant. And inertia, since it's rotating, would be I. And so we have um, determined what the equation for the period of a physical pendulum is by using this relationship. There's another way to do it. Uh, some of the torques equal I alpha. And alpha is omega squared theta, just like A is omega squared x. And so I can replace alpha with omega squared theta, and I can replace torque with mgh theta that we got from up here. And so I can solve for omega, and I get square root of mgh over i, and omega is also 2 pi over the period, so if you solve that for period, you get the same thing as over here. Now I mentioned when we did simple pendulum, that you could also treat simple pendulum uh, this way uh, with torque equals I alpha. And if you do that, the um, I is for a particle, because a simple pendulum, we don't have an extended object. Uh, so we just say it's mR squared, where in this case, um, L is the... Uh, radius of swing for a simple pendulum, and that is also the distance from the center of the simple pendulum to the rotation axis. And so I can put in ML squared and MGL instead of MGH into this equation, and the M's go, and one of the L's go, and we get the same thing we got from our other treatment of a simple pendulum. And you can also do it using this same argument.